What do you say, baseball fans? Rye Bread Talking Baseball, episode 85. Rays get one. Needed to hold off those pesky Blue Jays. They're not going away. And now home to host the Cleveland Indians who just got swept out of town by Houston. That will happen. Houston is just plain good, and we think they're going to end up in the West. The wild card standings as they sit right now, though, Cleveland's four and a half back of the Rays and the A's. The A's and Rays in a dead heat for both wild card spots right now. A's have a heartbreaking loss yesterday to the Red Sox, one nothing. James Caprillion pitching out of his mind. We love this guy. I've been collecting old cappy cards here. Pick one, pick one, pick a cappy. Got a plenty of cap rookies here. And then I've got a couple especials. I think we've shown this maybe on the court. These color match rookies with a little dough. This is my latest edition here. I like this one. But the the yellow border I think is going to be a a real winner. I don't I don't want to let it go at this point cuz I think Caprillion is pretty damn good. And so are the A's. They have Hendricks and Ole in the All-Star game. Rays get one. Here's your guy. You love old Iron Mike Zanino. Gene Short's not pictured. I know I'm going to keep going to the well. <laughs> I love it. Those Gators out there, we love you. Gator games, pretty fun, but a heck of a lot of Gene Short action going on. I'm just giving my guys a hard time. Go Gators. And then, speaking of the Rays. Got a lefty. I expect our guy to come alive. Mike Brasso looks like Phelps if Phelps had a shred of athletic talent. Look at that. You could see it. We love you. We love you, Phelps. Don't worry, buddy. But it's true. <laughs> anyway, too much inside action here on Talking Baseball. I want to talk about the Tigers again. Tigers beat the White Sox. We were saying that they were going to have a shot. These young pitchers are out of their mind lately. If the Tigers pitching arrives early, they're going to be tough to beat. They're 10 games out of the wild card. I'm not expecting them really to compete. The offensive lineup is just not there. But that pitching's coming around, man. And I've been buying a lot of breaks with Manning, getting them cheap. I got a bunch of chrome Manning, probably 20 chrome Mannings yesterday in a break. I got them for like $6. So I'm targeting some of these guys, hoping to get that car business up and going. And then we'll be incorporating it a little bit more into the show. I just think it's so cool. Here's another one. This is a three patch. Look at that. One from the cover, one from the uni, and one from the equipment. The tools of the trade, if you will. And I know you can't really see the number marking on here. This is a uh, 46 out of 99. So when the you have the established supply, the card is worth a lot more. And then don't count on our guy. We've got a bunch of old Taylor running around. I really like the way this guy plays. He's always in the middle of the action. And I think Bruhan's going to be on his way up here soon after being added to the Futures game. Shane Baz, our other kind of Ray to watch. I expect to see him before long. He's been selected to represent the United States. So his... Dance card's going to be full. That's going to be a great experience for him. But we're going to need him. Moving on from the, the Rays and the Indians, the overall wild card picture, the Indians are the only team that's hanging around that's not from the East or West. And we've been on this all year. You've got Seattle, the surprise Mariners who have bounced all the way back and are now three and a half out of the wild card. Ahead of Toronto, who just cleaned up on the Rays. So you've got Seattle, Toronto, Cleveland, Angels and Yankees rounding out the competitive uh, wild card race right now. Tigers are 10 games out of the wild card. I don't expect them to climb back into it. But you have to say, if Trout comes back, we counted out the A's, uh, the Angels because of the pitching, not because Trout was there or not. Because he's going to have to be Mike Trout coming off this injury immediately for them to make up this kind of ground. I haven't even heard of a timetable yet for him. The the initial was only six weeks. It feels like it's been longer than that. But when I was looking around, 
it didn't seem like there was much on him. I expect there'll be an update after the All-Star break on him. I'm sure the plan was just, let's just wait until after the All-Star break and see where we stand. But when he gets back into the action, I expect him to be extra careful and make sure that he's in it and he's going to stay. So there's no need to rush him back the way Otani has kept him afloat. Otani now with 31 bombs on the year. And then he's going to be a two-way player in the All-Star game. First two-way player in the All-Star game for the American League. <clears throat> Maybe, I don't know, it's, it looked like I got some conflicting reports on it. In the modern era, obviously that's never happened. So pretty cool. Mr. Majestic continues to write his own record books because the guy's just amazing. Angels have a <clears throat> have a tough way, a tough road to hoe here with Boston coming to town. We could use a couple of Angels wins here. The Rays could definitely use a little help. Boston, man, staying west. It's tough to beat that team. Man, winning in Oakland is not an easy go. And the Red Sox purported themselves well out there. And that's why they're in first place. We picked the Red Sox to win the AL East. That was a little bit of a reach at the time. Everybody was calling for the Yankees. It's not surprising because the roster looks better than they play, but I'm just not afraid of the Yankees unless they go out and get some stud pitcher at the trade deadline, which maybe they will. They're the Yankees. Who knows? I'd really like to see the Rays make a move for a starting pitcher, a decent one, and you know how I feel about it. I think that the Rays can operate without Kiermaier. I'm kind of tired of his act, but... He's a good player. It's not like I don't like Kiermaier as a player. I just think we have other players that can fill that role. I don't think that it's that. The defense of Kiermaier, another relic, jumping catch for Kiermaier. Yeah, well, his numbers don't indicate the way that he's played lately. I don't think the arm is what it was. And he's back to trying to pull the ball all the time. And when he was going the other way early on in the year and getting a couple of knocks, I don't know what knocked him off that trajectory. But now they're overshifting him, and he's kind of back to... Kiermaier batting 230 and getting the occasional knock. So I just think the team is in more dire need of a pitcher. Now, the Rays aren't going to mortgage for the future. They're going to have to get somebody with a couple of years of control. But, man, I, Hendricks would be my – I would love to see Kyle Hendricks because the Cubs are in an absolute free fall right now. They lose again to the Reds last night or yesterday. I like the Reds. We've been all over the Reds. I love that lineup. But if you are the Cubs, you got to do something. They are just in a tailspin right now. And it's going to be tough to catch the Brewers as it is, but they just keep on losing. Cardinals, my goodness, drop another one to the Rockies. The Rockies are good at home. They're always good at home. But, man, if you're the Cardinals, you better do something quick because the bottom is falling out on the Cardinals right now. And I... I don't see what is going to change with that until you want to have Flaherty back, obviously. But they're not playing well. So you've got Seattle, Toronto, Cleveland, L.A., and New York still vying for those wild card spots. And we said it at the beginning. We've been following all year. We kind of put it down for a minute. But it's going to be East versus West. And these East-West games are going to be huge. Boston and L.A. Angels tonight is going to be a little bit bigger. And with that huge market coming to town, Boston fans going to get a look at Shohei. And everybody who looks at Shohei loves Shohei. <laughs> and then another great matchup. You've got the Brewers and the Mets in a matchup of first place team. We're not that impressed with the Mets. I don't think the Mets are that good. But the whole NL East is just trash. Philly's getting healthy. They're our pick. We picked Philly. Doesn't look like that one's going to come through for us. <laughs> <laughs> but we were saying it all along that we don't really have a good feel for that NL East. <clears throat> the last game I want to highlight, Dodgers and Marlins, Bueller, Bueller, and our boy Trev, Trevor Rogers, Miami pitcher, making an all-star game. Happy to see that. We've been on him all year. He's one of our appointment guys. He is just fantastic. But for every bit of good news for the Marlins, there's a bit of bad news. They offered Sterling Marte three years, $30 million to stay in Miami. And if you wanted to make sure that he didn't stay in Miami, come with a weak sauce offer like that. Marlins go, oh, we tried to sign him. Get out of here. It's so transparent. Oh, we made an offer. Absolute garbage. Marte's worth a lot more than that. You don't have to be... Um, 
in the front office to realize that that's a garbage offer. Everybody, even the common fan knows that's a trash offer. I don't know what Miami's doing. They must not want him. Or they're going to deal him. Piss him off and deal him. I, I can see that happening. That's the Marlins way, if you know what I mean. But they have to win one first. Usually they win one and then sell the team. <laughs> but here we go. This is a cool card. Notice it's a name changer. Butane instead of Bueller. It's kind of a cool one. And you'll notice here, this is the Donruss that we were talking about the other day. Donruss doesn't have their licensing anymore. So you get like this generic picture, which is a shame because this is a pretty cool butane purple. Now, this is a special short print card. The rest of them say Walker Bueller, but I just happened to get lucky and grab these two. It was like a Bueller pack. And I got the, the purple butane. Pretty cool. Anyway. We're going to leave it there today. Again, the bets are off until we get back to Michigan. Tampa, St. Pete Clearwater, if you want a steak, why don't you head out there to Bascom's Chop House. Best steak, best wine list, great atmosphere. It's a wonderful place to get a meal. If you're on a vacation kick, just check it out, man. Chargo Island, Philippines, Bravo Beach Resort. It is absolutely life-changing. Get out there, meet some good peeps, and maybe cruise over to Pirate Castle for a little party. All right, thanks again for watching, man. We'll be back again tomorrow. We're going to do 162.